2025 board paper of physics is just in my hand. This is the solution of question number 2 and 3 of ICSC physics paper of 2025 of class 10. I have already uploaded question number 1 MCQ and the link to that will be somewhere here. Let us look at question 2. The first part it is fill in the blanks. In a uniform circular motion centrifugal force acts as a it is going to be away from the center this is correct b refractive index of the medium is independent of it depends upon the temperature it depends upon the wavelength inversely but no matter which angle of incidence so angle of incidence is the correct option c heat absorbed during the change of phase depends upon that is latent heat and latent heat depends upon the mass. Can you see latent heat formula is Lf is equal to Q upon M. So the latent heat depends upon the heat that is absorbed and also depends upon the mass. So it does depend upon the mass and that is the correct option. The EMF of a cell is greater than, less than or equal to the terminal voltage when the cell is in open circuit. Now when the cell is in open circuit, remember there is no terminal voltage. The EMF is going to be the reading of the voltmeter. Will there be any terminal voltage in our open circuit? Open circuit is when the terminal voltage will not be possible. Terminal voltage is seen when the circuit is closed. Correct? So here it will be greater than because terminal voltage in open circuit will be zero. In the step up transformer, the turns ratio is your NS upon NP. You will have secondary having more number of turns. So numerator being 1, it will be more than 1. The nuclear radiation with lowest ionizing power is going to be the one which will have the minimum particle size. So minimum particle size is going to be gamma because there is no particle. It is only electromagnetic. Is. So, this will be the correct option for the last fill in the blanks. Let us come to question number two, second part. A non uniform kite is hanging freely from the branch of a tree. Study the figure and answer the following. The center of gravity is going to be where the vertically downwards line, if it was supported over here, if it is supported over here, this kite the vertically downward line would be like this. If it is supported over here, it would go, it would go this way. Now, if it's supported over here, it will go this way. Now, the thing is that ideally, if you look at the pentagon, you should be able to see that Q is the center of gravity if it's the regular pentagon. Okay, but can you see that it is supported here at this point? And the vertically downward line is not passing through this point Q. It should have passed through Q if Q was the center of gravity. So which is the point which is having the vertically downward line passing through it? It is point R. So this was a little tricky. If they had suspended over here, now they say it's an irregular kite. If it was like a regular hexagon, or a regular pentagon, definitely we would have just dropped the perpendiculars here. But can you see from here, if we had to support over here, it would have gone from somewhere here, the vertically downwards line. Okay, if you had to suspend from here, it, it would have gone somewhere here, like this, the vertically downwards line. So the correct answer is R. This was a little tricky. Initially, I thought it would be Q, but it is R. And what is the answer for this? R lies vertically below the point of suspension. Okay, so the line drawn vertically downwards through the point of suspension will pass through R. So I'm just putting dot 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 over here. You can write it on your own when you're solving this. I hope you have written this. The third one, the displacement time graph of a sound wave produced by a vibrating wire is here. Now this is a time which means this is one time period, alright. 
Now, if this is the time period, remember it is going to connect us with frequency and frequency is one upon time period. They are saying, A, how will you adjust the tension of the wire to reduce the length of PR? Now, they want to reduce the length of PR, which means they want to reduce or decrease the time period. Now, if you have to decrease the time period, that means frequency has to increase. Frequency and tension, how are they connected? Frequency is directly proportional to the root of tension. Alright, so how will we write this answer? Your A will be written as to decrease PR, we must decrease time period. That is increase frequency and then you will say since frequency is directly proportional to root of tension therefore tension must be increased underline tension increased okay also decrease a time period increase frequency underline these keywords b which characteristic of sound is affected by reducing the length of pr the time period is decreased that means the frequency so which is the characteristic we can't write time period as the characteristic of sound so it will be frequency what will happen to frequency it is increased decreasing or reducing the time period okay so underline the word frequency for your answer b that finishes our question number two let us come to question number three the first one the ray of light enters a rectangular glass slab submerged in water at an angle of incidence 55 degrees does this ray undergo total internal reflection when it moves from water to glass justify your answer if you just keep a little diagrammatic presentation in front of you this is the glass slab let us say and this is water now you know that water is mu 1.33 and the mu of glass is 1.5 it is incident here on the glass surface so this being the normal it should go this way in absence of the glass slab it is going from 1.33 to 1.5 refractive index so it is going to turn towards the normal and then it is going to go away from the normal because it is going from denser to rarer this way they are saying, does it undergo total internal reflection here when it moves from water to glass? Now, this angle is 55 degrees, but it doesn't really matter because in order to have total internal reflection, the ray should go from denser to rarer. Is it going from denser to rarer from 1.33 to 1.5? No. So your answer will be no. So it does not undergo total internal reflection. And the reason will be that the ray moves from water which is refractive index 1.33 that is the rarer medium to glass which is mu 1.5 which is denser medium agreed then in the last paragraph you should write that total internal reflection takes place only when the ray moves from where to where moves from denser to rarer and angle i is greater than 
critical angle. So yes, angle of incidence is 55, which is more than 54 degrees, which is the critical angle. But it is not going from denser to rarer, so no total internal reflection. Second part, according to the new color convention, the color of the wire connected to the metal body will be the earth. So earth will be either green or yellow. You have to know this by heart. And for B, the switch of the appliance is connected to the live. So live is brown. Third part, which of the two alternating current or direct current produces varying magnetic field? Now alternating current is where varying from maximum to minimum. Whereas direct current, it will be the same EMF throughout. So varying magnetic field for A, it will be alternating current. The frequency of alternating current in India is 50 Hertz and the PD is 220 volts. They asked us for frequency, the right frequency. The fourth subpart, calculate the amount of heat absorbed by 200 grams of paraffin bags to melt completely at its melting point. So the heat is going to be M into L or it is melting so latent heat of fusion I'd like to show it this way. Now how much is the mass? Mass is 200 gram and how much is the latent heat of fusion? So 146 joule per gram. Gram and gram gets cancelled and your answer will be 29200 joules and that is your answer. This was a straightforward two mark question. One mark would be for substitution. The other mark will be for getting the answer, the second mark. So that's how you'll get your two full marks. The fifth subpart. Copper wire is wound around a steel bar FT. Current is allowed to pass through the coil for some time and then the bar is removed. Now because this is steel, it is going to be resulting in permanent magnetism. Draw only the magnetized bar FD and mark its poles. Now for our A part, they are just saying that take the bar, this is F and this is T. The current passing through is going to be here, going this way and coming this way. So this becomes the clockwise direction. So this end becomes south and this one, if you look from here, it is anti-clockwise. So this becomes north. So you have to mark the poles. So T becomes south pole and F becomes north pole. Trace two magnetic lines of force around FT clearly indicating the direction. Now once you have done this, you have to show the magnetic field like this. They say that show only two magnetic field lines. So I'm showing this way. So from north, the magnetic field lines will originate and they will end in south. And if you want, you can make this as a dashed line. The sixth subpart. A current flows through a metallic conductor for a long period of time. State the changes you would expect in its resistance. The current flows for a long time is going to increase the temperature and the resistance and temperature, they are directly proportional. So you will say resistance increases since temperature increases. You have to just spell it out, okay? I'm just giving you as R and T. And then you will say since R directly proportional to the temperature. B. Resistivity. If they talked about metallic conductor and just passing the current, if they were two metal conductors, their resistivity would be the same. But since the resistance of the unit length and unit area of cross section also is going to increase, resistivity also is going to increase. Okay, so this was a little tricky part. Curium is a radioactive element with the symbol CM24796, named in honor of Madame Curie. The graph of number of protons 
versus the number of neutrons of some elements are given below. Which point on the graph indicates curium? So for curium, the number of protons is 96 and number of neutrons is 247 minus 96. So that gives us number of neutrons as 151. Now where is number of neutrons 151? It will be here and 96 you will have these many options but 151 will be the option P. So your A is going to be P. For your B, which point on the graph indicates the daughter nucleus after curium undergoes radioactive decay of one alpha particle followed by two beta particles. So for this we will have to show the working 24796 that is your curium is going to emit one alpha particle so it will become 247 minus 4 that is 243 and 96 atomic number is going to decrease by 2 and because 2 beta particles are given out it's going to increase by 2. So this will remain the same so it will still be curium only but now it will be 96 and 243 which means the number of neutrons have become 243 minus 96 correct so they have become 147 so where is 147 here so it has become r so therefore r is the correct answer c state the mass number of the daughter nucleus the daughter nucleus is here the mass number is 243 so your c answer will be 2 43. That finishes our section A of 40 marks. In the next video, I will start with section B.